Chapter 24, Tanha Vaga, Craving, 334, the craving of a person given to heedless living grows like a creeper. Like the monkey seeking fruits in the forest, he leaps from life to life, uh, reaping the fruit of his karma. Uh, 335, whoever is overcome by this wretched and sticky craving, his sorrows grow like birana grass after the rains. 336. But whoever overcomes this wretched craving, so difficult to overcome, from him sorrows fall away like water from a lotus leaf. 337. This I say to you, good luck to you all assemble here. Dig up the root of craving like one in search of the fragrant roots of birana grass. Do not let Mara crush you again and again, as a flood crushes a reed. 338. Just as a tree, though cut down, sprouts up again if its roots remain uncut and firm. Even so, until the craving that lies dormant is rooted out, this suffering springs up again and again. So this uh, craving, uh, if we don't control it, uh, it grows wild. Uh, and uh, when the craving grows wild, uh, then uh, your suffering, uh, your sorrows uh, also multiply uh, at the grass after the rains. Uh. So to overcome this craving uh, is very difficult. Uh. But if you are able to overcome your craving, uh, then your sorrows don't stick to you. Uh, it falls away like water from the leaf. Uh. So this last part the Buddha says... Uh, you have to dig up the root of craving. How to dig up the root of craving? The root of craving is very deep inside us. So, to able to be able to dig up the root of craving, you have to go very deep inside you, very deep inside your mind. How to do this? Is by deep meditation. When we attain the jhanas, we go into our mind. When we go, we attain higher jhanas, we go deeper and deeper into our mind. Only then uh, we can dig out. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, as the saying goes, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, 339. The misguided person in whom the 36 currents of craving rush strongly toward pleasurable objects is swept away by the flood of passionate thoughts. 340. Everywhere these currents flow, and the creeper of craving sprouts and grows. Seeing that the creeper has sprung up, cut off its root with wisdom. 341. Flowing in from all objects and watered by craving, feelings of pleasure arise in beings. Bent on pleasure and seeking enjoyment, these people fall prey to birth and decay. We have six senses, huh? The eye, ear, nose, body, and mind. And we have six sense objects, uh, sights, sounds, smells, taste, touch, and thoughts. Uh. And these uh, six sense objects, uh, they are the Buddha calls uh, Mara's bait. Uh. Mara wants to tempt us uh, with beautiful sights, lovely sounds, nice smells, um, exquisite taste. Uh, soft uh, touch uh, and uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, so, if we are not careful, uh, we these six objects uh, will uh, pull us uh, and uh, we're craving for them, uh, will grow. Uh, so, we have to understand the Dhamma. Uh, but people uh, in the world, uh, worldly people, uh, they find uh, no other happiness uh, higher than this happiness. Uh, so they continue to enjoy worldly pleasures, la, sensual pleasures. La. But the Buddha says, uh, you can only let go of these sensual pleasures uh, when you attain uh, a pleasure uh, which is higher than these sensual pleasures. Uh. And what is that pleasure? That, that is the bliss uh, that comes from deep meditation. When we attain high states of meditation, uh, it's a different type of pleasure and it surpasses worldly pleasure and it's a lasting pleasure. Worldly pleasure, uh, you just enjoy for a short while uh, and then uh, you are satisfied for a short while. Then later, uh, you hunger for it again. 
and then you satisfy yourself for a short while, and then you hunger for it again. But from meditation, the bliss uh, that you attain uh, is deeper, is uh, more, is stronger, uh, and it lasts much longer. Uh, and from there, uh, because once you taste that pleasure, uh, then you are contented. Uh, you don't seek for worldly pleasures. Uh, worldly pleasures, uh, the difference uh, is that worldly pleasures, uh, when you enjoy, uh, sorrow is the result. Uh, but the bliss of meditation, uh, you enjoy, uh, the Buddha says, uh, you can indulge uh, in the uh, bliss of jhana, the happiness of, of jhana. And the Buddha says he encourages his monks uh, to indulge uh, in the pleasure of jhana uh, because it is harmless and it leads to the attainment of the Aryan stages. Uh, 242. Beset by craving, people run about like an entrapped hare. Held fast by mental fetters, they come to suffering again and again for a long time. 243. Beset by craving, people run about like an entrapped hare. Therefore, one who yearns to be passion-free should destroy his own craving. So our, our whole problem uh, in the world, uh, all our suffering uh, is because of craving. Uh, because of craving, uh, we continue on the round of rebirths, uh, suffering again and again. Uh, because when we crave for those things in the world that give us happiness, give us enjoyment, give us pleasure, then uh, there's a tendency uh, to crave for it again and again, uh, be attached to it. Uh, but the nature of uh, worldly happiness uh, is such that uh, it is impermanent and also uh, cannot be satisfied uh, only for a very short while. Uh, so if we don't have the wisdom uh, and we yearn for that type of happiness, uh, then we suffer again and again. Um, 344. There is one who had turned away from the forest of desire or lay life, uh, intent on the life of the forest monk. But after being freed from the forest of the lay life, uh, he runs back to that same forest. Come, behold that man. Though freed, he runs back to that very bondage. Uh, so there are some people like this. Uh, they uh, get some suffering uh, in the lay life, uh, maybe from because of stress of work or because uh, of family uh, conflicts and all that. Uh, or some other cause, or maybe the breakup of a relationship, and then they decide to become a monk. But after practicing as a monk for some years, there are some people, after five years, they go back to their life. Some after 10, 20, 30, uh, even 40 years wearing the robe, some go back to the lay life. So that shows that... Uh, they didn't attain right view. If they had attained right view and they would have become an Arya, they would not likely to go back to the lay life. 345 and 346. That is not a strong factor, the wise say, which is made of iron, wood or hemp. But the infatuation and longing for jewels and ornaments, for children and wives, that, the wise say, is a far stronger factor, which pulls one downward, and though seemingly loose, is hard to remove. This too, the wise cut off, giving up sensual pleasure, and without any longing, they renounce the world. Uh, so even iron chain, uh, you tie a person with an iron chain, uh, somehow uh, he can find a way uh, to get out of that chain. But if he's tied uh, inside uh, with the Attachment uh, to children and wife and family members and property, uh, that is a far stronger chain. Uh, although unseen, uh, it's extremely hard to cut off. Uh, 347. Those who are less infatuated fall back to the swirling current of samsara, like a spider on its self-spun web. This too the wise cut off. Without any longing, they abandon all suffering and renounce the world. Uh, to renounce uh, the lay life uh, is extremely hard. Uh, only when a person understands the Dhamma and uh, is willing uh, to 
uh, withstand the suffering, uh, then only uh, he can renounce. 348. Let go of the past, let go of the future, let go of the present, and cross over to the farther shore of existence. With mind wholly liberated, you shall come no more to birth and decay. So if you want to cross to the other shore, uh, we must let go of past, all the memories of the past, uh, just let it go, and have no ambition or plan for the future. And even what is at present uh, also, you just let go, uh, then only uh, you can cross. Uh. 349. For a person tormented by evil thoughts, who is passion dominated and given to the pursuit of pleasure, his craving steadily grows. He makes the fetter strong indeed. 350. He who delights in subduing evil thoughts, who meditates on the impurities and is ever mindful, it is he who will make an end of craving and rend asunder Mara's fetter. You see, a uh, uh, person who is passion dominated and given to the pursuit of pleasure, his craving grows. La. Now these scientists uh, have discovered uh, in our brain, uh, we have these, uh, what you call them, neurons uh, that make, uh, uh, if we do something again and again, uh, it forms a habit pattern uh, in our mind. It's easier to do. La. Each time you do, it's easier to do. So if we indulge in uh, the pursuit of pleasure, it, 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 uh, it forms a groove in our mind. It becomes a habit pattern. We always... Uh, follow it. So to change our, our habit pattern uh, is extremely difficult. Uh. It needs a lot of willpower. Uh. Yeah. And that willpower won't be forthcoming uh, unless the person understands the Dhamma. Uh. And also even understanding the Dhamma also not enough. The mind has to be strong. Uh. So you need to practice Samatha meditation uh, for the mind to be strong. Uh. Then only uh, you can act. Uh. And then here, the 350, uh, who meditates on the impurities. This is the unattractiveness uh, or the loathsomeness uh, of the body. Uh, if we meditate on the loathsomeness of the body, uh, and always uh, remind ourselves uh, that this body uh, will turn into a corpse very soon. Uh, and the corpse uh, will become bloated and smelly and break up. Uh, even the bones will disappear uh, after many years. Uh, then we see impermanence, uh, then uh, we can slowly uh, let go. 251. He who has reached the goal, fearless, free from craving, stainless, having plucked out the thorns of existence, for him this is the last body. 352. He who is free from craving and attachment, perfect in uncovering the true meaning of the teaching, and who knows the arrangement of the sacred texts, in correct sequence, he indeed is the bearer of his final body. He, he is truly called a profoundly wise one, a great man. Uh, so one uh, who has uh, uh, practiced the Noble Eightfold Path to the end, uh, then uh, he uh, has gone to the other shore uh, and this is his final body. Uh, uh, and he is a really wise person. Uh, Freed of craving and attachment and understand the real meaning of the Dhamma taught. 253. A victor am I over all. All have I known. Yet unattached am I to all that is conquered and known. Abandoning all, I am free through the destruction of craving. Having thus directly comprehended all by myself, whom shall I call my teacher? This, uh, after the Buddha was enlightened uh, and uh, he met a uh, man uh, and this man uh, asked him uh, because this man was very impressed by the Buddha's appearance. Uh, the Buddha looked very serene uh, and bright. Uh, so this man asked him, who is your teacher? Uh, and this is how the, the Buddha replied. Uh, that the Buddha is the greatest conqueror. Uh, so how he has no, no teacher. Uh, 354. The gift of the Dhamma excels all gifts. The taste of the Dhamma excels all tastes. The delight in the Dhamma excels all delights. 
the craving free vanquishes all suffering. Uh, so giving of the Dhamma is the highest uh, giving. Uh, giving of material things uh, benefits people uh, only for a short while. You give food to somebody, uh, you only satisfy him for one day. Uh, tomorrow he's hungry again. Or even if you give him a job, uh, then you help him uh, for this lifetime. Uh, but if he doesn't understand the Dhamma, then uh, he might be reborn as a ghost, a hungry ghost, uh, or in the animal realm, uh, or in hell, uh, and suffer. But if you teach somebody the Dhamma, and he practices the Dhamma and understands the Dhamma, in this very lifetime, uh, he will attain happiness. Uh, and for many, many lifetimes after that, uh, he will be happy and, and not suffer. Uh, 355. Riches ruin the foolish, but not those in quest of the beyond. By craving for riches, the witless man ruins himself as well as others. Uh, so the f- foolish people, uh, when you have riches, uh, you are attached to your riches. Uh, when you are attached to your riches, uh, then uh, it becomes a source of suffering. Uh, mm. But those uh, who understand the Dhamma, uh, even lay people, uh, if, if, if a lay man uh, understands the Dhamma, uh, he might be rich, uh, materially rich, uh, but he may not be attached to it. Uh. So in the suttas, the Buddha says, uh, sometimes uh, even a person from a very rich family, uh, he can give up everything uh, uh, and become a renunciant. But sometimes uh, if the person is attached uh, to his family and home, uh, he can be a very, very poor man. Uh. Uh, with uh, no property, even be in debt. Uh. You ask him to renounce, uh, so he cannot renounce. Uh. Uh, 356. Weeds are the bane of fields, uh, are the curse uh, of fields. Uh. Lust, the bane of humankind. Therefore, what is offered to those free of lust yields abundant fruit. 357. Weeds are the bane of fields, hatred the bane of humankind. Therefore, what is offered to those free of hatred yields abundant fruit. 358. Weeds are the bane of fields, delusion the bane of humankind. Therefore, what is offered to those free of delusion yields abundant fruit. 358. 359. Weeds are the bane of fields, desire the bane of humankind. Therefore, what is offered to those free of desire yields abundant fruit. Uh, these three things, uh, lust, uh, raga, hatred, dosa, and delusion, moha, these are the three basic poisons uh, that uh, keep us in samsara. So if a person is free of this uh, lust, hatred, and delusion, uh, he's an arahan, uh, and anything offered to him, uh, the merit uh, is uh, boundless. Uh. But even those who are partially free, uh, for example, the Aryans, uh, uh, you offer something to an Aryan, uh, that merit uh, is also incalculable. Uh, chapter 25, Bhikkhu Vaga, the monk. Uh, 360, good is restrained over the eye, good is restrained over the ear, good is restrained over the nose, good is restrained over the tongue. 361, good is restrained in the body, good is restrained in speech, good is restrained in thought, restrained everywhere is good. The monk restrained in every way is freed from all suffering. 362. He who has control over his hands, feet and tongue, who is fully controlled, delights in meditation, is inwardly absorbed, keeps to himself and is contented. Him do people call a monk. Uh, So we practice restraint. uh, We don't allow uh, our passions uh, to overcome us. uh. Uh, then we uh, become freed of suffering. Mm. Then a uh, good monk uh, is one uh, who delights in meditation, uh, is controls himself uh, and is contented. Mm. 363. That monk who has control over his tongue is moderate in speech, unassuming, and is humble, uh, and who explains the teaching in both letter and spirit Whatever he says is pleasing. Uh, so a monk who practices the Dhamma and teaches the Dhamma uh, is uh, pleasant. 
364, the monk who abides in the Dhamma, delights in the Dhamma, meditates on the Dhamma, and bears the Dhamma well in mind. He does not fall away from the sublime Dhamma. Uh, if a person understands the Dhamma, then he delights in the Dhamma. When he reads the Dhamma, he is extremely happy. And such a person uh, who understands the Dhamma would have attained vision of the Dhamma, uh, understanding of the Dhamma and become an Arya. Uh, 365. One should not despise what one has received, nor envy the gains of others. The monk who envies the gains of others does not attain to meditative absorption. 366. If a monk does not despise what he has received, even though it be little, if he is pure in livelihood and unremitting in effort, even the gods praise him. Uh, monk, uh, we are dependent on lay people uh, for the food and other offerings. Uh, so whatever we receive, uh, we should not despise. Uh, uh, and uh, we should not envy the gains of other monks. Uh. What a monk receives uh, is because of his blessings. Uh. If a monk has more blessings, uh, he receives more. Uh. A monk has less blessings, uh, he receives less. Uh. So only if the monk uh, does not envy others, uh, then uh, near his mind can become still. Uh. And if he's a good monk, uh, then uh, even the gods will praise him. Uh. The gods will notice uh. 367. He who has no attachment whatsoever for the mind and body, who does not grieve for what he has not, he is truly called a monk. Uh, 368. The monk who abides in universal love uh, is deeply devoted to the teaching of the Buddhas, attains the peace of Nibbana, the bliss of the cessation of volitions. To attain the, the bliss of Nibbana, a person has to give up uh, all desires. Uh. When you give up desires, uh, then you have you don't exercise your will. Uh. You don't exercise volition. Uh. Volition ceases. Uh. You have no, no one thing at all. Uh. Then only uh, you can attain Nibbana. 269. Empty this boat, monk. Empty, it will say lightly. Having cut off lust and hatred, you shall reach Nibbāna. Uh, if we have a lot of uh, things in our hand, uh, we cannot uh, accept any anything more. Uh, we have to empty our hand uh, before we can accept something else. Uh, uh, so we have to empty all the unwholesome habits and all the unwholesome states in us uh, before we can uh, fill it uh, with all the wholesome states. Uh. 370. Cut off the five, abandon the five, and cultivate the five. The monk who has overcome the five bonds is called one who has crossed the flood. Uh, uh, if you look at the note at below, uh, you will understand. The cut off the five lower fetters, uh, abandon the five higher fetters, uh, and cultivate the five faculties. Uh, uh, then uh, you can cross the flood. 371. Meditate, monk. Do not be heedless. Do not let your mind whirl on sensual pleasures. Heedless, do not swallow a red-hot iron ball, lest you cry when burning. Oh, this is painful. Uh, if a person falls into hell, uh, uh, there's a type of hell uh, where that person is swimming in the river, and then from exhaustion, uh, he reaches the bank. And when he reaches the bank, uh, the guards in hell uh, will come to him and ask him, How are you? And he says he's very hungry, uh, very tired and hungry. Then they take an iron, uh, open up his mouth. Uh, two of them, one will pry open his mouth. Another uh, will pour uh, this uh, iron ball into his mouth. Uh, and this iron ball will go into his mouth, uh, burn his intestines, uh, burn his stomach burn his uh, uh, cologne and all that and come out. And when he passes out, he will bring some of the intestine out with him also. So he suffers. So in hell, we have a lot of mental suffering plus physical suffering. And then after some time, he's blur, blur. They ask him, how are you? Then he says, I'm very thirsty. And they open his mouth again and then pour molten liquid 
uh, iron or what, uh, that's heated so hot uh, until it's liquid, uh, then they pour that into his mouth. Uh. In the same way, uh, it burns his mouth, burns his uh, stomach, burns his intestines, uh, and then it comes out. Uh. So this is, uh, this is when he cries, uh, oh, this is painful. Uh. 372. There is no meditative concentration for one who lacks wisdom and no wisdom for one who lacks meditative concentration. One in whom are found both meditative concentration and wisdom is indeed close to Nibbāna. So these two things are important, concentration and wisdom. And to attain these two, you have to practice the seventh and the eighth factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. The seventh factor, uh, Sama Samadhi, uh, is basically uh, Vipassana, uh, contemplating the four objects. Uh. And uh, this uh, eighth factor of the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, Sama Samadhi, uh, is basically Samatha. Uh, Samatha. Uh. 373. When the monk who has retired to a solitary abode and calm his mind, comprehends the Dhamma with insight, there arises in him a delight that transcends all human delights. 374. Whenever he sees with insight the rise and fall of the aggregates, the five aggregates, eh, he is full of joy and happiness. To the discerning, this reflects the deathless. Eh. So this Dhamma that we learn, eh, we must always reflect on it. Eh. Uh, when we reflect on it, eh, then we understand more. Eh. So like nowadays, uh, we have the Dhamma on CDs uh, and in books. Uh, so it's important uh, that we listen to the Dhamma again and again uh, until we die. Uh, or we read the books, uh, the Nikayas, the original suttas, uh, keep reading until we die. Uh. The more times we listen or we read, uh, the more we understand. Uh. And when you understand, uh, the delight arises. Uh, it is... Uh, how do you say, uh, supramundane, uh, uh, transcending worldly delight. Uh. 275, control of the senses, contentment, restrain according to the code of monastic discipline. These form the basis of the holy life for the wise monk here. 276, let him associate with friends who are noble, energetic and pure in life. Let him be cordial and refined in conduct. Thus, Full of joy, he will make an end of suffering. Uh, so a monk uh, should control the senses, uh, practice contentment, uh, keep the precepts uh, and other practices uh, which are found under charana. Uh, as I mentioned in the uh, Diga Nikaya talks, uh, under charana, the practice or conduct of a monk, uh, there are ten things uh, to be practiced. Uh, things like contentment, keeping the sila, uh, moderation in eating, devoted to wakefulness, uh, restraint of the six senses, uh, or guarding the six sense doors, uh, mm, abandonment of the hindrances, seclusion, attainment of the four jhanas. Uh, 377. Just as the jasmine creeper sheds its withered flowers, even so, monks, should you totally shed lust and hatred. Uh, so lust and hatred is something uh, that we must uh, slowly cut away. 378. The monk who is calm in body, calm in speech, calm in thought, well composed, and who has spewn out worldliness, he truly is called serene. Uh, so if a monk uh, guards, uh, the three sense doors, body, speech, and mind, uh, is no more worldly uh, than he is serene or tranquil. 379. By oneself, one must censure oneself and scrutinize oneself. The, well, the self-guarded and mindful monk will always live in happiness. 380. One is truly one's own protector. One is truly one's own refuge. Therefore, one should control oneself even as the trader controls a noble steed. So, in the spiritual path, uh, we have to depend on ourselves uh, and depend on the Buddha's Dhamma. Uh, that's the way to practice. 
Nobody can help us. The Buddha says, even the Buddha cannot help us. He only helps us by teaching us the Dhamma. We have to walk the way ourselves. 381. Full of joy, full of faith in the teaching of the Buddha, the monk attains the peaceful state, the bliss of cessation of volitions. 282. That monk who, while young, devotes himself to the teaching of the Buddha, illuminates this world like the moon freed from a cloud. So if a person practices the spiritual path uh, while he's still young, uh, it's much more uh, convenient uh, because he's still strong. Uh, he can strive and uh, he can stay in the forest and all that. Uh. But uh, when, a pers- when a monk becomes old, uh, for him to live alone in the forest uh, uh, with all the... Uh, He'll get all the aches and pains all over his body. Uh, it's very difficult to practice. Uh, and he won't have the strength or so uh, uh, to keep uh, awake uh, most of the night. Uh. So when we are young, uh, we should practice. Uh, a lot of people think, wait until I'm old. When you're old, uh, you have no more strength to practice. Uh.